Welcome to the ED Post Sports Chat. I'm Drew Rubin signing with Ed Owens. And Ed, the Mountaineers are, are fresh out of their first bye week of the uh, season, preparing for Texas Tech this weekend. And do you think the Mountaineers got what they hoped to out of their first week off? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, if, if you ask them, they said their top priority heading in, according to Dana Holgerson, was rest and relaxation. Uh, they accomplished both of those things. He gave them a light week of practice last week, uh, didn't really do much, gave them the entire weekend off, and came back earlier this week. Uh, and, and a lot of guys that were injured are back healthy now, one of the most important being quarterback Clint Trickett. He was out Tuesday night and said that his shoulder's feeling much better, as close to 100% as he expects to feel all year. So I, I think in, in terms of getting healthy, getting themselves re-energized, refocused for this Texas Tech game, they, they think they accomplished both those things. One of the issues that you have to wonder about coming out of the bye week is WVU's rush defense. Uh, do you think it was more of a matter of Baylor uh, revealing a major flaw in WVU's defense, or is there something else at play and that they'll be able to correct uh, for the rest of the season? Defensive coordinator Keith Patterson said that Baylor's offense is very unique. That's the word he used to describe it. Uh, they really spread WV out. They forced them to bring their safeties up to defend the run. That made them exposed. Uh, they don't expect to see the same kind of thing against Texas Tech. One of the things that all of the defenders said earlier this week at player interviews was that Texas Tech does what they've seen all year, which is a good thing for WVU. I mean, they were really effective against the run. They were doing a great job stopping the run up until the Baylor game. Baylor rushed for 476 yards. They had 200 yard rushers. They had eight rushing touchdowns. I mean, they, they really blew WVU out of the water, and, and the Mountaineers did not have an answer for it. They expect that to change this week. So WVU's defense, it sounds like you get the sense they're, they're not a fragile squad, and you had to wonder, coming off of last year, uh, the first five weeks, by all accounts, they, they played well, showed great strides from the previous year, but you had to wonder if the thought of, uh-oh, 2012 is happening again, but it doesn't sound like that's the sense that you're getting there. No, a lot of guys said they were correctable mistakes. A lot of guys also cited a, a pretty poor week of practice heading into that Baylor game where maybe they were riding a, a little too high after Oklahoma State. They were feeling pretty confident in themselves and uh, they just went into that game uh, maybe overconfident and, and weren't prepared for what Baylor was going to bring. They said it's all things that they can and have fixed and, and really again do expect to, to have a much better showing this week against Tech. One of the things WVU did need to fix is communication. Uh, the most, most glaring issue was between quarterback Clint Trickett and Dana Holgerson, a lot of flaws during the Baylor game. Did WVU spend uh, part of the off week fixing those errors, the communication between Holgerson and Clint Trickett and also between the rest of the offense? Yeah, uh, one of the things that both offensive coordinator Shannon Dawson and Trickett said was that they simplified some of the signals. Clint was having a hard time getting some of the signals from the sideline, having a hard time relaying them, communicating them out to the receivers. He said one of the things they did was kind of tone it down, uh, make it simpler for him to see what Dana was trying to get called in. They, they were trying to keep it secretive. They wouldn't really exactly say what changes they made, but they were designed to make it simpler for Dana to get plays called into Clint, which obviously everyone saw was a, was a major problem against Baylor. Makes you wonder if you're going to see some of those huge boards that they have on the defensive side, if, if things are going to change, because as it is right now, I mean, it's mostly just Dana doing hand signals, right? I mean, that's that's how Clint's been getting the, the play calls so far this season, right? Or how he hasn't been getting the play yeah. calls so far this season. So, yeah, it, it is hand signals, and it is one thing they really tried to simplify this past week. At last one, WVU, I think the one word that you could use to describe the first half of the season is inconsistent, up and down, up and down. It's like a roller coaster ride with the way they perform from a nail biter with William and Mary, upsetting Oklahoma State, blowout losses to uh, Maryland and Oklahoma uh, and to Baylor. But they've had an off week. Does this game set the tone for the rest of the season for a team that's looking for? its identity? You have to think that it does. Uh, a lot of talk heading into the bye week is about how much they needed it mentally and physically. They need to come out and, and kind of show what they accomplished in that bye week. If they come out and they lay an egg against a, a tough Texas Tech team, it, it's going to be deflating. It's going to be defeating for this team. They have to come out and have a good showing. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have to win in order to have a successful season. I don't think this will determine the course of the next six games, but I think they do need to really come out and, and at least have a good effort to feel good about the direction they're heading right now. All right, very good. Ed, appreciate your time. Please continue to check the edpost.com for all the latest on the Mountaineers. We'll have a, a blog up and running for the Texas Tech game. Thanks for watching today.